there! It's day five of week five of 52 weeks of vlogging. I finally figured out how to white balance properly. Da -da! It turns out there's a thing. It's in the video editing part and you can click on something white in the screen, which is like all of it and at the beginning, and then it knows what white is supposed to look like. Who knew? And it's Book Review Friday and I'm reviewing this book, Funny Boy, by Shyam... Shyam? Sh Shyam? I'm gonna go with Shyam. Selva... I'm not even gonna try the last name, but it looks like this. And this book is fantastic. It's about a Sri Lankan boy living in Sri Lanka during the time of the riots between the Tamil Tigers and the Sinhalese. Sinhalese? 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 I don't even know. I suck at pronouncing proper nouns. And it's about how he grows from being a child into being an adult. Both literally, because RG is seven at the beginning of the book and a teenager by the end of the book, but also figuratively, because he falls in love, he sees violence for the first time, he experiences violence firsthand for the first time. It is both a literal and a figurative coming of age story, and that's one of the beautiful things about this book. One of the beautiful things about this book is that it completely immerses you in Sri Lankan culture. For example, listen to this excerpt from pages two and three. When the aunts and uncles eventually drove away, waving gaily at us children from car windows, we waved back at the retreating cars with not even a pretense of sorrow. For one glorious day a month, we were free of parental control and the ever watchful eyes and tail bearing tongues of the house servants. We were not, alas, completely abandoned, as we would have so liked to have been. Amachi and Janaki were supposedly in charge. Janaki, cursed with the task of having to cook for 15 extra people, had little time for supervision and actually preferred to have nothing to do with us at all. If called upon to come and settle a dispute, she would rush out, her hands red from grinding curry paste, and box the ears of the first person who happened to be in her path. We had learned that Janaki was to be appealed to only in the most dire emergencies the one we understood by tacit agreement never to appeal to, was Amachi. Like the earth goddess in the folk tales, she was not to be disturbed from her tranquility. To do so would have been the cause of a catastrophic earthquake. In order to minimize interference by either Amachi or Janaki, we had developed and refined a system of handling conflict and settling disputes ourselves. Two things formed the framework of this system territoriality, and leadership. I love the way we get those hints about how RG, the character, lives in his country and in his family. The children have a hierarchy, the adults have a hierarchy, there are routines like regular visits with grandparents. We really get a feel for what life is like for him as a child. But also, that beginning those themes of territoriality and leadership are themes that carry through the book. We see them in how Argy's father, Appa, runs his business. We see them in how Argy's classmates respond to one another and respond to Argy, and most of all, respond and react to the principal at their school when Argy is older. And we see it in the civil war that's happening between the Tamils and the Sinhalese. He sets it up wonderfully at the beginning, and I didn't even realize that it was that beautifully set up until I reread that passage just now. Another wonderful thing about this book is the way it handles the theme of oppression. Oppression is present in so many levels within this book. There is oppression of one culture over another, oppression of the government over its people, oppression of wealthy people over poor people, oppression of straight people over gay people, oppression of adults over children. Again, it's not something that you see happening throughout the book. It's not something that you go, oh, I see what he's doing here. But in the way the story is told, by the time you finish the book, you realize, wow, he's really saying something here. It is so beautifully crafted and so well done. You must read it. Funny Boy by this guy. You can find it at your local bookstore or order it online. Links down there in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.